Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus. And check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? BANGLE again here coming back at you with another video today. Back on Madden NFL 19. I don't know if you can hear it from my voice. I am a little bit sick, I feel like, but... We're going to power through and do the realistic rebuild of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If you didn't see the fantasy style a couple months ago, maybe you want to go check that out. But uh, yeah, let's hop into it. Of course, for these realistic rebuilds, we are going to be using my class. You can download it if you'd like. It is Bengal 2019 draft on the PS4. It is a PS4 exclusive. However, I hear there are people working on copying it over to Xbox. So if that's what you're interested in uh, and you want to use it on Xbox, maybe even PC as well. I have no idea about these, but it, it, probably look in the comments section of my draft class video. That'll tell you everything you need to know. Super Bowl is between the Chiefs as well as the Bears. I'll update you guys on who's the victor in that matchup. As the Chiefs absolutely smash the Bears, 31-8 to is your final. Quan Alexander is a free agent. As is, we didn't even check out the roster. Was my first time doing one of these? All right. Well, sorry about that. This is the roster, of course, from left to right on the offensive line: Donovan Smith, Ali Marpet, Ryan Jensen, Cam Benenock, and Demar Dotson. It's an older offensive line in some senses. Demar Dotson is, I believe, 31, 33 at this point after the season, so he would have been 32. That's my bad. Donovan Smith. 26, but terrible, as you can see. Ali Marpet's great. Ryan Jensen is getting up into uh, near 30. Only a 78 overall. I don't really know how I feel about him just yet. I know he just got a big contract in real life. I guess we'll hold on to him uh, for now. And then Cam Beninox actually young. Uh, he's only 25 as well, um, but also bad. So we're going to need to improve there. Great duo tight end with OJ Howard and Cameron Brait. And then at wide receiver, we got to get better. Because Deshaun Jackson is just too old. Adam Humphreys will not be able to develop well enough, I don't think. Chris Godwin's good, but we need one more guy uh, to go with Mike Evans. Maybe Chris Godwin develops. Maybe he does. That'd be awesome. That'd be excellent. But I just don't think it's going to happen. And then Adam Humphreys could be a good four. Djax has got to go. I think Famous Jameis has got to go. Fitzmagic, probably got to go. And then at running back, I'm not working with Peyton Barber or Rojo or Jaquiz Rogers. And then defensively, it somehow gets worse. I like Justin Evans. Andrew Adams was an undrafted rookie free agent out of UConn that played on the Giants for a bit, and he was okay. And then he got benched and then ended up on the Buccaneers. I guess he starts now because Chris Conti's terrible. He's also bad. At linebacker, I like Levante David quite a bit. Juan Alexander's good. Kendall Beckwith is all right. We'll have to see how he develops. Cornerback is a nightmare. Vernon Hargraves, I loved at Florida. He just hasn't done it in the NFL. Carlton Davis is not that high of an overall. Uh, nor is, what, Rod? Ryan Smith. Rod Smith was a wide receiver for the Broncos. I don't know what I'm talking about. Defensive line is just not good, in my opinion, uh, for the game. Jason Pierre-Paul is 30 years old and 81 overall. He's going to start regressing pretty heavily, so that's just not doable. Gerald McCoy is going to start regressing as well. He's 31 and only an 88 overall at this point. He was a bit higher then, of course, is going down mightily. Also, now down to quick development from Star, which sucks. Vita Vey is good. Vinny Curry is just probably not going to be the guy. So we have a lot of positions that I want to replace. Seems like a lot, but I think they just all need to be replaced for the benefit of the team. So do we want to reassign Quan Alexander is the question. 25, I think absolutely. The rest, I'm out on. I, Adam Humphreys, what do you want? Five and a half per year? Yeah, pass. Quan Alexander is back. He's the only one. I just can't afford the other players based on their ability. It just can't happen. Le'Veon Bell is a free agent. I feel like I sign him quite a bit now just because of how talented he is. And the Bucks do need a running back. Tevin Coleman could be cool instead. And no one's really going after him. That might be more cost effective. A lot more players going after Tevin Coleman now. Le'Veon Bell to the Cowboys. Oh, I wonder who their running back would have been otherwise. Oh, that's right. Ezekiel Elliott. 
And then someone commented the other day, like like yesterday, on um, a video that was like a week and a half old or two weeks, where I complained that the Chiefs were going after a running back. It's like, yeah, clearly there there's an issue now. They need one. They didn't then. But, uh, yeah, I still don't understand the Texans with Lamar Miller going after one. We have to get a, up this contract. Oh, we got Tevin Coleman. All right. That'll help us out of running back a little bit. Niners are on the clock at number one. They go Cleland Farrell. Wow. Over Nick Bosa. Herbert goes to the Jets. I guess the Sam Darnold era is over. Nick Bosa goes to the Cardinals at number three. Jags take Jonah Williams out of Alabama. Ed Oliver to the Bengals. You imagine Ed Oliver and Geno Atkins teamed up. Bills take Devin White. Greg Little goes to the Raiders. Lions take Nikhil Harry, and we are on the clock. I'm gonna go Greedy Williams here. Cornerback out of LSU. Star development as well, so he should help out the secondary quite a bit. 93 speed, 84 man, 82 zone. Decent enough play rack tackling. Press could be a little bit better, but overall... Pretty solid cornerback. Deontay Thompson's available in round two. That is an absolute yes. Welcome to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Best strong safety in the class. Best safety in the class, honestly, in my opinion. 91 speed, 84 zone, 84 hit power. To make 78 overall, again, with star development. Not superstar in either of these players, but uh, I will take it. Obviously, two very good guys. Two very good players. Talented. David Sills goes to the Patriots. If that's not the most Patriots pick ever, I have no idea. Will Greer's available. I don't think I'm going to do that. Although Dwayne Haskins is available in the third round. That could be a fun pick. Play a year under famous Jameis. All right, welcome to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Dwayne Haskins. 75 overall normal development. I mean, he has decent numbers that we can work around. Not sure if he will be the guy eventually, but uh, I think it's worth worth our draft pick there. Let's go to the Notre Dame receiver, big body. Chase Claypool, 74 overall, quick development, 6'4", 227 pounds, 91 speed. Decent catching, decent route running. Um, it's not, I mean, not incredible, obviously, but I mean, he's pretty good for a 74. So Chase Winovich here. Out of Michigan. Left end, 67 overall. Probably should be a bit higher. But, um, eh, we'll, we'll work with what we got for right now. We'll also take Voshan Joseph here. Out of Florida. Yeah, not, not great, but it is pretty late here. Sixth round. We're going to simulate to the end. Pretty good draft for us. Greedy, Deontay Thompson, Dwayne Haskins, Chase Claypool. Uh, the rest was subpar but we did well early as you should so i did not do a good job going after offensive line kind of forgot that was an issue but we did better on defense obviously deontay thompson starter for us now greedy williams number one corner noah spence is going to start and uh i'll probably throw jpp on the trade block if i can see what we can get for him trade offers for jpp i think i'm going to accept the second round pick in 2020. I think for sure. Oh, Andy Janovich, what a, what a great offer. All right, New Orleans. That's not going to be a great second rounder, but I think that, that overall trade gives us some value and uh, it, it makes us a little bit younger. Vinny Curry is not much younger than JPP. They're the same age. They're both 31 now in this. Um, but Noah Spence now is an opportunity to start. And we're probably going to start Carl Nassib at left end, if I'm being honest. We're going to go into free agency. Nathan Goldsberry out of UCF seems like a decent signing at left tackle. And is there anyone better that we can play at right guard? Uh, not really at all. <laughs> Patrick Omame is here. Great signing for the Giants. He was fantastic. I think Justin Evans needs his own coverage upgrade. It's like in the 60s, which is pretty bad. Not really a huge fan of that. This is the defense for season number two. This is the offense. Not amazing, but, you know, it, it is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We're going to see what we can do. I'm going to simulate to the midseason mark, and I'm hoping for, like, at least three wins, but I don't know. Ooh, four wins. Four and three. Saints are 7-0. and 
it's going to be tough to be successful while the Saints are in the division, which I don't see changing anytime soon. We're going to do the best that we can to overtake them. I just... I don't know about Jameis Winston, man. It's a tough spot. I also definitely didn't show the stats from season number one. As I said, guys, I am feeling a little bit under the weather. So my... Like, I feel like whenever you're sick, your brain just doesn't work either. It's a really fun combination to have just nothing go well. But uh, welcome to the channel if you're new. Thank you. Obviously, it did make the playoffs. Wow! Things really... Uh, things really just went terribly for us. <laughs> we started off not too bad. Preseason, great stuff. We were not terrible. We were winning a few games. And then we're just like, oh, let's just lose out. Except for uh, we beat the Giants. Great, my favorite team. Uh, but other than that, lose to everybody. Put up six points, nine points, nice. Nine points again. This is a really, really, really terrible offense. Like, one of the worst I've ever seen. This is a team that averages, like, what, 12 points a game? Jameis Winston was uh, not terrible, it looks like. Not amazing, obviously. Tevin Coleman was decent-ish. Kind of. Mike Evans had a good year. Chris Godwin had a pretty good year. Catches are pretty down. OJ Howard didn't have a touchdown. We're going to change up the playbooks, maybe. Offensive line was ridiculously bad. And then defensively, uh, we were all right, it looks like. Oh my goodness, great production from the defense here with getting tackled for loss. Not a whole lot of pressure on the quarterback, clearly. Didn't really get any of that. And then, uh, I mean, a few interceptions here and there. Nothing nothing noteworthy. Nobody had four or anything like that. Force fumbles are relatively low. I saw at least one defensive touchdown. Justin Evans got one. We had the 17th offense in the NFL in terms of yards. And we had the 29th defense. We need to change up some things for sure. We'll get better as we move into the third season. Phillip Rivers wins MVP. Doubt you're going to see any Tampa Bay Bucks in here, and we don't. Uh, NFC Offense Player of the Year goes to Todd Gurley, no Bucks. Defense Player of the Year, Aaron Donald, no Bucks. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Drew Locke, Chase Claypool at number nine, and then Defensive Rookie of the Year, we just missed it, goes to Levante Taylor, Greedy Williams, number two, Deontay Thompson, number three. Brutal. Jameis Winston is an impending free agent. The Texans beat the Saints in the Super Bowl, by the way. Um, do we really want to sign Kami Fairbairn? Uh, I don't know. We'll see what is happening in free agency. Sean Jackson's here. I'm so out. Jameis Winston's in here. I'm out. Noah Spence is here. I'm out. I'm out on like almost everybody. Vernon Hargraves, I'll resign. But besides that, no thanks. Vernon Hargraves is back. We're going to need to have a very productive and active offseason. It starts with free agency, and it continues through the draft. I've already loaded the class. I, I didn't forget this time. We have a lot of money. Let's spend it wisely, please. Elliot's here. I guess they don't need him anymore. Now they have Le'Veon Bell. Dog, I might actually go after him. So Zeke rejected our contract. That's all right. Because we got Jalen Smith, another cowboy, DJ Reader, and Brandon McManus. Now, why would I have gotten DJ Reader? He clearly doesn't fit the 4-3 scheme. He is a 3-4 defensive tackle, or 3-4 defensive end, 4-3 defensive tackle. Well, Gerald McCoy, I, I hate to say it, he is becoming useless. <laughs> he can continues to regress unbelievably. He's now down to normal development. Uh, he sucks now. That's the only thing I can say. He is He is bad. He just is not a good player. I know 84 overall. In game, remember. Everyone's like, what do you mean Gerald McCoy isn't good? In game. We gotta, I, I said something one thing. I'm like, Darius Leonard's not good. And this, of course, was before the season. He was like a 70 overall or something. And everyone's like, what do you mean? Like, months later. I'm like, shut up. Regardless. Uh, DJ Reader, I think, will eventually play defensive tackle. I need to work on getting an edge rusher. We have some of the pieces in place here. The team just overall, not good. Not a good team. I'm trying here. I'm trying to make them good. They don't want it. They don't want to become good. I, I really I really want it to be a good team. It's just not happening yet. Also, you got to wonder, why'd you get Jalen Smith? You have Kendall Beckwith. Well, I will answer that question. Kendall Beckwith, not that good. 
Also, I'm gonna I said in real life too. I don't think he's that good in real life. I think he's okay. I think he's an all right starter. That's what I'll give you. I thought he was okay at LSU. Nothing special. That's what he is in the NFL. Jalen Smith plays outside linebacker now. Actually, no. Quinn Alexander plays outside linebacker now. He'll play left outside linebacker. Up to an 85, and now it'll be an 86. What? Nope. 85 still for Quan Alexander. Pretty good. Wish he had a face scan. That's all right, though. Still a good age. Still good overall. Jalen Smith. Levante David, who's regressing rapidly. I hate regression with a passion. It is draft time. Jameis Winston's still in free agency. We're going to rock with Dwayne Haskins. I think it's just uh, a good change of pace. I've changed the playbook and whatnot. We're going to see how effective we can be. And we should have a pretty high draft pick because we sucked so badly. We're picking number five overall. Dolphins on the clock at number one. They go Nick Coe out of Auburn. Raiders take DK Metcalf. It was in my class. Of course, I can't do anything about that. Um, Patty Fisher out of Northwestern goes to the Bengals. Again, this 2020 class is terrible. I have no time to make one. It was a, a struggle enough to make the 2019. J.K. Dobbins is here. I know we have Tevin Coleman. Jerry, oh, there are a number of options here. I got to play this smart and not stupid. I really want J.K. Dobbins, though, so I'm going to take him. 81 overall, superstar development, 93 speed, good acceleration, good carrying. Overall, a very good player. This is just this is just something I wanted. I wanted to take J.K. Dobbins. It does seem somewhat realistic as well, and uh, I probably will end up trading back into this first round. So I didn't end up trading back up. We're just going to see what's available. Obviously, a lot of quarterbacks. I'm going to rock out with Dwayne Haskins, as I said. Who helps us out here? We just need offensive lines so badly. Matt Womack at Alabama is going to be the pick. 74 overall is just not going to get it done. That will start because our offensive line is terrible, and there are never any in free agency. But I, I didn't really see us having another choice. Here we're going. Prince Tegawanago out of Auburn. Please help us out at left tackle. 75 overall. I guess it'll do it. Travis Etienne of 74. Brutal. All right, taking Michael Jordan here out of Ohio State. 75 overall pretty much seems to be where the uh where every single offensive lineman fits in that 74 75 76 range and it's okay because it somehow believe it or not actually helps the team gg robinson is still here out of louisville so we're gonna take him second round player 71 overall um is no that's probably gonna be it for this draft so I think we did do okay in the draft. Definitely not one of my best. I decided to go running back at number five. I'm sure that annoyed a lot of people when I have Tevin Coleman. J.K. Dobbins is the future. Tevin Coleman is just going to be a backup. Um, that's just the way I'm doing it. And we've improved on the offensive line. I know how, how but we did. Barely. It's just It was so bad before. <laughs> Defensively, I think we're in a really good spot. I want to I wanna trade Gerald McCoy. I do. Trade offers for Gerald McCoy. Please be anybody good. Mark Barron. Uh, we are going to have a bad team. It's just not going to be a good team. Like, it's not as bad as I'm saying. But just looking at Vinnie Curry... I don't like looking at all these players regress i don't like looking at the offensive line i don't like it's bad but uh we're stuck with it for right now one and six at the midseason mark uh yeah i mean that'll do it it's just it's just a bad it's a bad team it's pretty much all i can say at this point we have players that are developing pretty well but a few really good players on an overall bad team we're just not going to get it done. We're going to prioritize offensive line in this free agency, as well as defensive end. The defense actually is not bad. We need a cornerback. We need a D-end. Uh, we're going to need two D-ends, actually, because Gerald McCoy is going to be like an 80 overall. He's not going to be good enough to start. And we will, we will probably get rid of him. Bunch of good free agents. Justin Evans, Chris Godwin, OJ Howard, Levante David. Going to try to re-sign all of them. All right, there we go. Got all the top four back, and I'm, I'm good on Bo Allen, so sorry to him. Didn't make the playoffs. We finished 3-13. and 13. 
we're going downhill. I don't know if you guys have picked up on that. Uh, but that's all right. Sometimes you got to... Ooh, Chase Claypool is a ton of skill points. Sometimes you got to get worse to get better. Did they say that? I don't, I don't think that's a saying. Regardless, I tried new playbooks that I've never used before. And I don't think it went well. Offensively, we were 22nd. So bad. And then defensively, we were one of the worst. J.K. Dobbins looked like he had a terrible season as well. Dwayne Haskins was all right. J.K. Dobbins shared a lot of carries. So that'll do it. But he had an okay season, I guess. Receiving O.J. Howard, letter team in catches. Chase Claypool had an insane season. Mike Evans was all right as well. Offensive line just let everybody through. So that's that'll do it. 12 tackles for loss, 11 for Gerald McCoy. Like, he's still playing well, but... Maybe that's a product of the uh, the system. Not sure. Uh, not a lot of interceptions. We're just not doing things right. And that's th that's a problem. And I'm not sure how to get them to start playing well as Phillip Rivers wins back-to-back -back MVPs. Jacoby Brissett. What is going on? Uh, AFC Offense Player of the Year, Phillip Rivers. We're an NFC team, so I don't really care about that, actually. Offense Player of the Year, Ty Gurley. No box defense player of the year. Ruben Foster. A lot of bears in there. No Buccaneers. Offensive rookie of the year is J.K. Dobbins. Okay. Defensive rookie of the year, Joe Giles Harris. No bucks. All right. We need to have a big free agency. The Packers beat the Browns 34 or 31-24 in the Super Bowl. And let's go ahead and take care of some of our needs. A lot of running backs here. J.K. Dobbins up to a 90, though, so obviously don't need one of those. Back-to-back -back MVP Phillip Rivers is in here. Big free agency, still on a couple of Eagles. Derek Burnett and Sidney Jones, Taylor Moten and Jason Kelsey, even three Eagles. Just take the Eagles, just get on this team. Taylor Moten also added to the bunch, so we have a new starting center. Ryan Jensen was terrible. Taylor Moten, new starting right tackle, might switch to the left side. So the offensive line is looking much improved. Uh, and then a wide receiver. I, on offense, I think we're pretty much fine. I really like where we are. Defensively, I moved it to a 3-4. I think I'm probably not going to keep it that way. Just kind of wanted to see how things would look, but we just don't have the personnel at linebacker. This will be the offense for season number, I guess, what is this, four by now? I don't know. It depends on how you count it. Because, um, of course, we didn't really do anything season one other than simulate to the offseason. Because we started in week 13 or 14. This is the defense. The defense looks pretty good. Gerald McCoy now plays left end, which doesn't make any sense, but he's bad either way. He's regressed quite a lot. He is uh, pretty useless in almost every way. I mean, what is he good at? High 80s, he has play rec, so strength, stamina, injury. Great. Yeah, he's, he's sick. He can stay on the field. Let's have a good draft. Uh, this is auto-generated prospects. I think the 2021 classes are kind of weird, or 2020. Uh, I guess it would be, what, 2021? I don't know. We picked third overall, 2021, and we'll see what's available. We need to improve it. Left tackle, right guard, and left end. Here's a left tackle that fits our scheme. Good bench. Can't pass it up. Derek Garner out of Penn State. Welcome. 81 overall, quick development. Very, very happy to add him to the team. You had to reach by one. Tough. Very pleased. Also, I will mention, with the custom draft class, somebody called me out. I want to find this exact comment. Here we go. Finally found it. Just one time. And it's edited, too. All right, oh, here we go. I love, I love the end, so stay tuned for this one. Just one time, don't edit the players in your draft class to be better for who you are going to draft earlier than projected. It's pretty obvious when every pick is ranked number one in true talent. You're not fooling anyone. <laughs> what do you mean not fooling anyone? You think I, I changed the overall based on players I think I'm going to get? What are you, out of your mind? It's a graphical glitch. You guys have seen this a hundred times. I'll be in the fifth round. I'll take a 60 overall, ranked number one overall in true talent. Yeah, it's a glitch. <laughs> You're not fooling anyone. Yeah, all right. All right. Glad I didn't get that one past you. We're going to go Darius Braganhead or Texas. You guys know I can't pass up on a uh, on a Texas Longhorn. Although he feel like he really fits a more 3-4 system. I think we're going to anyway. Can't be worse than Gerald McCoy. All right, Darius Spragan out of Texas. Hook'em horns. Welcome to the Tampa Bay Bucks. 77 overall. I'll take it. 
77 speed's better than I thought it would be. 84 power move. Yeah, he'll fit in pretty nicely. And he actually is one overall worse than Gerald McCoy. Fun fact. But he will start at left end. Look at all the round one quarterbacks still available. Spencer Warren out of Florida. We're going to go with Alexander Torres. Maybe he's a better pass rusher. 75 overall. Uh, I mean, we could play him left hand even. See what his overall is. We'll take Walker Lyons here. Looks like a pretty good fourth round player. 72 overall. Not going to play, but not bad value. Not a bad player here in the fifth round. But uh, yeah, we're going to simulate to the end of the draft. We'll see what Alexander Torres is at left end. And then we'll make the decision about the starter. We'll move Gerald McCoy back to the defensive tackle. He won't start now. DJ Reader and Vita Vea are the future at defensive tackle for this team. The rest, I just, just don't care for particularly. Both a 77 overall at left end. Spragan and Torres, 23 years old. 6'7", 303. He's pretty big. Uh, and then Torres, I don't know. We'll play him as a rush left end. And this is the team. Pretty good defense. Getting better. Pretty good offense. We'll have to see how it works. I've changed schemes again. New starting left tackle. Right guard could be better. But overall, not the worst thing. All right. I actually, I think this is a team that's going to go better than three wins. <laughs> of course, you never know. We'll have to see. Otherwise, this video would be uh, probably my biggest failure. Although, like, the, the team is nothing special. A lot of times, you'll see me not win very many games in simulation but the team's sick and it just doesn't perform for whatever reason but in this one like the team building hasn't been exceptional we're six and two of course the saints are eight no undefeated i think this is this is better it's a better season things are finally going well we qualified for the wild card the saints fell off so badly the falcons took the division are you kidding me we finished 10 and 6 so we had a, a worse second half for sure. Started off really, really nicely. And um, then the second half was not so great. Although it wasn't terrible, to be fair. What happened with the Saints, though? They were undefeated. And then they almost lost out, barring a tie against the Panthers and a loss to the Bucks. The Falcons stole the division out of nowhere. That is pretty unbelievable. We are... In the playoffs, though. Let's see how the uh, simulation went. Dwayne Haskins was pretty good overall, I have to say. Rushing, uh, not great at running back. The numbers aren't spectacular. And uh, at receiver, seems like the possessions were just kind of spread around pretty fairly. Everyone with around the same touchdowns, yards. Blocking, offensive line was about the same. Defensively, Jalen Smith played pretty well. 112 tackles, bunch of tackles for loss, and finally, we get some higher sack totals, 7-7, seven and seven, which is embarrassing that that's what it is, but it's better. More interceptions, Greedy Williams played well, I like that, with four interceptions, more forced fumbles than ever, any defensive touchdowns, no, but we did better, 10th in the league in offense, and 12th in defense, so we're a better team, I like that. Saquon wins MVP. Gotta love that as a Giants fan. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Saquon Barkley. No Bucks in there. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Blake Martinez. No Bucks. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Darren Kincaid. No Buccaneers. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Taven Monroe. Alexander Torres at 5. Darius Spragan at 7. But we have made the playoffs. Everything we've worked so hard for is finally coming to fruition. Let's go ahead, upgrade the team, and then I'll show it off before we start this playoff run. Hopefully, it's a deep one. Not a bad team, to be fair. It really has improved quite a lot. J.K. Dobbins is up to a 92. That's pretty insane for his second year. And then defensively, every linebacker is an 88 overall. Deontay Thompson's a 94. Greedy's a 95. Wow. Yeah, this is a pretty good-looking team. Let's see what we can do. State Farm Stadium in Arizona. We're a way better. We're a way better team. We gotta. We gotta win here. Come on. Close game right now. We might hop in. Third down alert. We are going to in the third quarter. Down by four. Let's take over, Dwayne. 
Rolling out with Haskins. He feels slow as anything, and that release is no better. Jesus. Going to the end zone! Oh my god, are you kidding me? Josh Rosen makes that throw. Is that Christian Kirk? Wow. You know, they, they deserve to win the game after that one. Can we get a moment? Here we go. To take the lead. That's a pretty stacked box. I wish we could audible to a pitch. But power is the only option. Handoff goes to J.K. Dobbins. Easy touchdown. And we take the lead. Oh, great pressure. Rosen goes down. That's Quan Alexander in the blitz. And this could put Arizona out of field goal range to tie it up. And it does, actually. Wow. Make the play. Sidney Jones ices it with an interception. And we are headed to the divisional. See you guys there. Ooh, divisional against the Dallas Cowboys. 93 overall. Okay. All right, Dallas. Pretty close game so far. We are up 13-3 to for the start of the second half. We might take over at some point if we need to, but we're up 20-3 to over the Cowboys. This one isn't even particularly close right now. We've really blown it away with one touchdown. I thought Dallas might answer, but they just haven't. There's finally a touchdown. But it looks like we are headed to the NFC Conference Championship. A 20-10 victory over the Cowboys seals it. And we'll have to see who we're facing. Ooh, the Falcons made it to the Conference Championship. That's a fun one. Let's upgrade players first. Dwayne Haskins is the only one. Adrian Killens, third string running back. That's all right. Let's play the moments. Hopefully, we're headed to the Super Bowl. It's a very close matchup. 90 overall for the Falcons versus our 89. I think we can make it. All right, got a lead early, but Atlanta takes it back very quickly and even goes ahead even more. 19 to 7. We need to get some points. Yeah, we're kind of getting rocked here a little bit. 26 to 7. We couldn't convert to end the half. This Dwayne Haskins release is unbelievably slow. It just really is. That's open. Mike Evans catches it down at the two. Dwayne Haskins has thrown three picks today. I, I didn't throw any of them. Um, which I usually do, so. And that's just, there's just no blocking there at all, is there? J.K. Dobbins not having a great day today. But they are stuck in goal line. They've actually moved. Hold on. What is this? No, no. Let's, uh, we might turn this into a quarterback draw. And we did. A little bit unorthodox, but it works out. Dwayne Haskins, touchdown. 29-14. Time is ticking on our playoff run here. We need to score quickly. We don't have to go for two just yet. But I think it would give us a really good idea where we are. And we're going to throw it up. And we can't get it over Isaiah Oliver. That could be the ball game. That's open. Haskins hits him in stride. Chris Godwin, get out of bounds. Thank you. Well, this game is not over. We're going to try to fit it in. Oh, my God. How does Desmond Trufant come over to make that play? I know it was incomplete. He didn't get his feet down, but unreal. First and goal. We're going to OJ Howard. Touchdown. I really think we should go for two now. I really think we should. The game's probably not going to make us, but I think it's in our best interest to go for two now. They're going a lot of defensive linemen. This is where I love to utilize the slants. We'll see who's open. We're going to block JK and look for an open receiver. I pressed the button initially. It didn't register, but then we eventually do find Mike Evans for the touchdown. 29-22 with three timeouts. I don't see there being a reason to go for the onside. We're just going to try and play some defense. Utilize these timeouts. Third and five. Game on the line. Please just hand it off to Devontae Freeman. They are going to. And we can't stop them. That's the game. We unfortunately could not mount the comeback. We came close. We came really close. But that's going to do it. We lose here in the conference championship. But... I didn't think we'd be in this position. I think we fought back hard. 
uh, over the rebuild, not even just this this game against the Falcons, because things were not going that well. But we turned it around with some good drafts, some good free agent periods, uh, and that just goes to show you, like this Bucks team playing in the same division as the Saints is going to be in a tough spot for the next couple of years. Uh, obviously, the Falcons could still be a threat. I know they didn't play that well this year, but they're still a talented, a talented team. The Bucks are the worst team in the NFC South right now. The Panthers aren't terrible either, and they won't be uh, in the next coming years based on what their outlook is now. So the Bucks are in a tough spot. They have to decide if Jameis Winston's going to be their, their answer at quarterback or not, or they're going to have to move in a different direction. Maybe that would be in this draft class, going after a guy like Dwayne Haskins. Who knows? That's just all speculation. But that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.